Hello, everyone, to ForminCon 2021 again online. And again, about uh, application centric deployment with Foreman and Ansible. So, today I want to show you what application centric deployment can do for you. And maybe you also are using Ansible to configure your host, and you have some nice looking playbooks like this. So, uh, in this scenario, we are configuring some elastic nodes, some Kibana nodes, and again, elastic nodes and Kibana hosts. So you're doing multiple um, configuration steps and the target is different hosts. So for using this, um, you would need to call Ansible, form an Ansible multiple times for um, specific hosts. Um, currently, Foreman is host-centric, which means you deploy a host and you configure that host. The next, you configure a host, uh, deploy a host and configure it. And you do that multiple times for, for example, in this scenario, to deploy and configure three different hosts. But what, what we actually want to do is we want to... Uh, deploy a specific range of hosts. And if that step is done, I want to run one Ansible playbook, which configures all these three different hosts. And you see um, the output, so something like a report afterwards um, to understand and see if everything was fine. So that is the, the target of application-centric deployment. And how it really works is like this. So there are two different components. There's Foreman ACD plugin, and there's a plugin called Smart Proxy ACD, which runs on your Smart Proxy or on your Smart Proxies, if you have multiple Smart Proxies. If you press the deploy button later on, um, it will run the deploy host um, um, uh, target first, which will deploy all your hosts. And if that job is done, a remote execution job will be um, sent to your smart proxy. It will create the inventory, so um, the Ansible inventory it will grab the Ansible playbook from your Foreman um, ACD. And then it will run the Ansible playbook for these hosts. So one Ansible playbook um, run would be started configuring all the hosts of your inventory. And the data is actually um, provided by your form and ACD. And in the end, you will see the output of your Ansible playbook in form and remote execution um, job monitor. Yeah, so um, there are different um, steps to configure form and ACD. So first of all, you need to configure the playbooks. So which Ansible playbooks do you want to um, provide? Then you are creating an application definition which uses the Ansible playbooks. An application definition is configured once and an application instance uses set definition so that you are able to create multiple instances of your application definition. So for example, um, that manager role creates an applica application definition like an, an elk stack and that user later on gets or uses that application definition multiple times and creates multiple different elk stacks um, in your foreman. And in the end, it can create 
um, your hosts on premise in the private cloud and public cloud, whatever your um, setup is like. In the next demo, uh, I want to show you how application-centric deployment really works. And the um, the example will be about um, an Elk stack with Kibana and Elastic. So in the end, we want to have two Elastic servers and one Kibana server, and everything should be linked together. So as I said, um, the first thing you need is an Ansible playbook. So I create an Ansible playbook. Elk. You can configure it by a directory or by a git. So a directory that playbook needs to be stored on your form and then you reference it uh, with the specific parts or you can use a git repository if you specify a git repository you need to use a branch then you can synchronize that repository um, so it, now everything from that url was downloaded to your foreman and then can be used so now I play Elastic, which is the play file. Submit. I did that before already. So now I have Elk and Elk2. Now I need to import the groups. So um, your Ansible playbook need to look like this. And there are group vari variables. Um, all Elastic nodes, Kibana nodes. And if you press the import groups button, it will import these um, definitions. And I go to application definitions. And I create a definition like L2. Now I need to reference which playbook do I want to use. Elk2 playbook. And then set a name. So I have Elastic um, servers. And now I need to reference the Ansible group. So in this case, Elastic nodes. Um, this exists because I pressed the import groups button before. Now I can reference if you want to later on use that service, how many hosts do you need to create so that you can fulfill that service? Um, Elastic, I need to have three, for example, at least. And I can create a second, I need to create a second one, Kibana. CentOS group, Kibana nodes, and one Kibana node is enough. So that's from the basic setup. Now we can also um, add some foreman parameters. Like for my Kibana, I need to make sure that it has a lot of resources, so I picked the large compute profile. Large compute profile, and store that. And now I can also lock that parameter, which means in the end, if a user uses that application definition, he's not able to change that value. And I can also um, set or add some more um, Ansible data. So that Ansible data can then be used in the Ansible playbook. And I can also add some YAML complex data. 
So roots. Ah, what do you see here? Invalid YAML. Okay, yeah. So it will do a linting, a quick linting. Okay, and again, I can um, press, I want to lock that. Save. Submit. So now the application definition is ready to be used. So normally, or maybe some other user can now log in, for example, um, someone who is just deploying applications and you can use that application definition for that he press the button new application instance and you want to roll out a new elk stack so elk2 enter a name of that new elk stack Unachieved service counts. Service Elastic expects at least three configured hosts. Okay, so I need to add a lot of Elastic hosts. Oh, sorry, that host already exists. Right. Elastic Okay, that's fine. But well, I already have something like a Kibana host, so I can use an existing host, which will then be used to configure um, a Kibana server on it. So I might select my existing host to select already existing host so that's a list of of already existing hosts on that format and i select this one and this will be my kibana nice okay here it says this is an already deployed host okay changing the parameter is not possible that's that's true um, and if i later on deploy that um application instance of course it will not delete that dark lock um, host it will only call the ansible or use that host during the configuration step and it will configure it via ansible playbook um, so that the data and that machine is not deleted and redeployed or whatever okay um but I can change the Ansible variables. And as you see, you have that YAML value, which is set, but I cannot um, change it because that value is locked. That's fine. Here you have also Ansible group bars for all, which you can also edit if you want. No, don't want to do that. Submit. So, and now I'm able to deploy that um, ELK2. And if I press that button, confirm to deploy ELK2, yeah, please deploy it. It will create four new hosts. No, it will create three new hosts because that dark lock is an existing host, which is not necessary um, to be created. So now you see, um, the host deployment state is currently pending. You see that deployment task um, happened and was executed. That will take a, a while. Um, later on, if the all hosts um, exist and were deployed, um, automatically the configuration job will be started. I already have prepared something like this. So in uh, this one, the 
host deployment state is finished completely. And there you see that there's a configuration job available. And this configuration job was successfully. And there you see the output of Ansible playbook run, which will configure all that steps which were um, configured by that Ansible playbook. Yeah. So that's our multi-host application, which is now deployed and can be used. And everything is connected by that Ansible playbook. The future. So how will the future look like? Um, so Adam um, created some in infrastructure uh, roles like smart proxy host, which um, hopefully can be used to run remote execution shops um, to configure the application instance. So I want to have a look at this, if that can be used in application-centric deployment. I want to have a look at the API and add some more API endpoints so that it's possible to um, configure all this stuff with Hammer CLI and um, maybe also to start deployment with Hammer CLI. Um, currently, Ansible 2.10 um, would support Ansible collections, but Ansible collections and Ansible 2.10 is not supported by CentOS 7 or it's not delivered by CentOS 7. Um, therefore, we um, did not invest time to support Ansible collections, but we will have a look at it sooner because Ansible collections can make it more easy to, uh, um, well, to, to use and reuse roles. And um, currently we have two different ACD ready Ansible playbooks. One is the Alex scenario, the another scenario is Prometheus. And I'm pretty sure that it makes sense to have some more Ansible or ACD rate ready Ansible playbooks. And of course, as always, um, that is not specific to Ansible. It would also be possible with salt. So give me some more time and I will work or maybe Bastian will work on the salt support, which would be very, very interesting for me and for everyone, hopefully. If you want to have some more information about um, application centric deployment. Here is a list of links. Um, and if you have a look at this link, for example, um, this is the whole documentation in of application centric deployment within docsdeformant.org. And here are the links for the existing um, ACD ready ANSO playbooks. If you have some more questions, you can contact me, of course, send me an email, or um, I'm normally online at the form and def um, with S. Bernard. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Bernard. Are there any questions? Josh, good to see you. Hello. Um, so I think there's been uh, some prior art in this area, and I'm curious what lessons uh, you may have taken from it. So there's been a notorious crash and burn with Puppet application support. Uh, we've seen a bunch of hand-rolled attempts. I'm thinking of Mirantis with Fuel. They had something that they hacked together in Java for deploying OpenStack that I think crashed and burned, then they migrated to Salt. I'm just curious what sort of prior art uh, you may or may not have looked at in sort of developing this and uh, maybe uh, things that you have looked at to avoid. Hmm. So good question. Um, so maybe you can, can help me somehow um, 
what what do you mean with needs to be um, considered or needs to be avoided? Well, I, 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 there have been a number of attempts for these things that have gone out there and uh, with other configuration frameworks, not with Ansible, and they've all sort of failed where they've run into complexity problems in the wild where they've never quite worked right. Like uh, they've scaled up, uh, you know, when you start to keep layering more and more things onto them. And I don't think any of them have really quite made it in the end. Uh, and so I was just sort of curious if you'd looked at them and, and tried to avoid well, them. The, the only one I can think of that's really quite gotten some traction is Juju uh, for sort of these multi-application, multi-host things. So, well, to be, to be honest, I don't have a look at these um, other tools and I, I don't know these other tools, but what we actually um, are creating here is um, we are, well, Foreman of course can be used to deploy multiple hosts. So that's already possible. And everyone, I guess, know Ansible and that is normally the case if you are using Ansible playbook that you're not only referencing one host, but you're referencing multiple hosts. And what we actually do is we deploy hosts. And if we are finished with it, we call Ansible playbooks um, for that um, scenario. So we are, well, we're using Ansible as you normally you should do. <laughs> um, well, there are other tools um, out there were also possible to, to configure or use Ansible and Ansible playbook to um, configure applications. Um, and it will, uh, it will also collect an, a lot of data. Um, what is, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's a problem we all have, right? I mean, uh, everybody has this problem and uh, everyone for uh, forever has been sort of ignoring the problem where we pretend our applications are stateless and we don't have dependencies and we try to deploy things as if they don't have interdependencies and and we plumb so it's a it's a it's an absolutely uh, needed thing uh, and a somewhat obvious thing to do uh, I, I'm just saying people have, have tried this before and, and, and run into things that have failed. <laughs> and so, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I can have a look at it, uh, these other tools, um, later on, and maybe I will uh, read some, some, um, uh, well, instructions and some reports why they have failed. So thanks. Um, and I, I will try to have a look at it. Thanks, Josh. Um, are there any other questions for, for Bernard? Cool. Okay, Doc. I'm just uh, Bernard. Thank you. And if anybody has additional questions, just um, reach out to Bernard there or drop a question on the community discourse because he hangs out there quite a bit as well. Uh, so let me stop.